In this series about cooperatives, we're exploring what it means to live in a cooperative, what it means to shop at a cooperative, what it means to send your children to a nursery school cooperative, healthcare cooperatives, and all <coughs> kinds of cooperatives around the country are providing services and meeting the needs of people. In Greenbelt, as they know, there are many, many cooperatives. There is the Greenbelt Nursery School Cooperative, the Greenbelt Supermarket and Pharmacy, we have our credit union, we have our housing co-op, and today that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on Greenbelt Homes Incorporated, and with me to talk about Greenbelt Homes Incorporated is the general manager, Eldon Ralph, and also the president of the board, and that is Steve Skolnick. So we're going to start um, by, I want to ask both of you how you got involved with GHI. How did you come here? Mm -hmm. And who wants to start? I'll go first. <laughs> okay, Steve. <laughs> 1977, uh, my young wife and I moved back to this area from where we had been living in eastern Canada so that she could attend graduate school at the University of Maryland. And I had a brand new job. I was teaching for Montgomery County Public Schools and came home one day and she said that she'd been looking on the housing board, no internet, of course, and uh, at the University of Maryland and she had seen uh, a house um, in the place called Greenbelt and uh, that's how we first, you know, we didn't buy that first house and of course we were re really looking to rent. We just had a one-year-old child and two dogs and no money, but um, um, we came into Old Greenbelt for the first time and were astonished. Um, I grew up in Montgomery County, not 15 miles from here, never knew Greenbelt existed. And uh, basically we've been here ever since. And that's a little bit, uh, a little bit about our, my story, how we came to Greenbelt in 1974. We had a one-year-old and we wanted, you know, to buy a house, so we started looking in the newspaper for what we could afford, and there it was, Greenville Homes Incorporated, that's what we could afford, and again, astonished when we came here and we saw, we saw this community. Now, Eldon, what about you? <laughs> in 1993, I relocated from New Jersey to Maryland, and I was brought here by my former company, the Service Master Company. I was working at one of their accounts in Washington, D.C., the contract ended. They wanted me to relocate to Texas. I couldn't afford to do so. And I decided that I would stay in Maryland. One day I was looking in the newspapers, it was the Washington Post, and I saw this tiny ad for, and it was an ad for a position of physical plan director of Greenbelt Homes. It was very fortuitous because during the weeks before, I had never looked in that section, in the property management section. So I turned up to an interview, and the rest is history. <laughs> I, like Steve, I never knew that Greenbelt existed, and more so GHI. I was really astonished that there was such a community not too far away from where I lived. Right. And so the rest is history. You started out in physical plant and, yes. and then uh, moved up and now you're general manager and so you have had experience with a lot of different areas. Of, of That's correct. In 2008 I became the assistant general manager and in 2011 I became the general manager. And from 1997 until 2008 I was the physical plan director. And that physical plan director, I guess, means making sure that the homes are in good shape. <laughs> or is it something else? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So what kind of, um, you know, services does a GHI provide for its members? Well, the mission of the cooperative, of course, is to provide housing for our members. So we are a wholly member-owned cooperative. So, and there are 1,600 memberships, uh, it means there are 1,600 living units in GHI. And um, our, our mission is to uh, provide housing for all of our members and to maintain that housing in good condition into perpetuity. Okay, 
that's, mm -hmm. that's, good, that's important mm -hmm. because that's one of the key things that people want is a place to live and shelter over their heads, right? It's, it's true and because we are a member-owned cooperative, we uh, work very hard to keep the cost reasonable because there's no, there's no profit involved. It's, it's different than renting, for example, because uh, the fees that a co-op member pays to the cooperative um, go towards the operating expense and the operating expense is the cost of operations. There's no markup or profit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so what exactly does GHI cover? And does, it, does it cover putting flowers outside in your yard? I don't think so, does it? <laughs> no. But what does, you know, what, you know, what, you know, I think I've heard people say, uh, you know, well, okay, if, if the toilet isn't working, I call up GHI and they come and take care of it. That's true. That's true. Right? Happened to me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else do you cover? Ex-maintenance director, I think that's your question. Well, GHI has divided responsibilities between what the co-op provides and what members are responsible for. So GHI covers the payment of real estate taxes for the entire cooperative, the provision of trash services by paying the city to dispose of the members of the members' trash. We provide maintenance of the homes essentially for structural elements within the homes. We are as members are mainly responsible for the aesthetic type of components within their homes, such as painting of walls or refinishing of, refinishing of floors. Okay, so GHI also takes care of all of the common spaces within the co-ops, which means that we maintain the common areas by mowing them regularly. And we provide a number of other common services, such as the restoration of parking lots, such as the maintenance of trees throughout, throughout Green GHI, such as the replacement of underground utility systems, which are defective, and a whole host of other things. And I, I Those see, are just examples. Well, that's, yeah, so just about you know, anything except for you know, the decorative things, the you know, yes. aesthetics that you mentioned, yes. painting, you know, if you wanted your walls to be purple you know, inside, that, that's your problem. <laughs> well, whatever color you want your walls to be, that's your problem, yeah. even yeah. if they're just white. There are um, exceptions to this, however, if, you, uh, if a member um, install some non-standard components in the home, such as in my home when we built our addition, we put skylights in the addition, then the, the co-op will not maintain the skylights. The members, we are responsible for our own skylights since mm -hmm. that's not something that would be uh, an original component to the homes. And you wouldn't, a GHI generally would not have skylights around anywhere anyway? None, none of the original homes have skylights. Yeah, so, right. so, it was so, not a 1930s no. <laughs> feature. <yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> now that uh, brings yeah. us a little bit to the history of the cooperative. How did the cooperative come about? Well, it was um, a, a plan. It was the first federally funded planned community in the United States, as as you know. But I'll say <laughs> it again: um, built in uh, between 1935 and 1941, I think, um, by the Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration, with the specific purpose of providing as full employment as possible. Um, it was a Works Project Administration New Deal project to put men and women, but mostly men. Uh, back to work. And the original 880 some odd homes were built uh, between 1935 and 1937. I think the first tenants moved in in 1937, October, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, the community was operated by the federal government as rental, low income rental properties until 1952, I think it was, when the cooperative was formed. Is that mm -hmm. right? That's correct. And um, the federal government. Um, uh, decided to divest uh, from the planned community and that's when the members, very far-sighted members, uh, formed the Greenbelt Veterans Housing Cooperative and got a mortgage and, uh, and bought the property for six million, I think, dollars, something like that. And uh, it's been, been going ever since. Right.
by the way, um, the federal government built a thousand additional homes, the frame homes, um, in 1941-42 for um, World War II defense workers. Uh, so that's that makes up the 1600. Makes up the 1600. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I know personally that uh, at, at uh, another point in the, the 60s, uh, the uh, cooperative decided that uh, they were losing some of the families, some of the larger families. So mm -hmm. built a few larger townhomes <coughs> to try to. 20, 20, 25. There are 29. 29. 29. Well, 25 larger townhomes and four single-family homes. Yeah. yeah, and so that brings us up to 1,600 homes. Yes. Right. We call those the sure. new homes, by the way. New so, homes, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, what now, 30-some yeah. homes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, 1969, 1970, they were built. So yeah, you know, yeah, so. Not exactly yeah. new anymore. Yeah, not exactly new, but they are new to, to uh, Greenville Homes Incorporated, uh, which, you know, kind of brings us to, you know, here we have homes that were originally built in mm -hmm. 1935, 30, 637, 41, and then mm -hmm. we have some of the quote unquote new homes um, all going on about 40 years old. How do you maintain, I mean, what do you, what do you do to make sure that those homes are there to provide your mission to provide, you know, nice homes and for people to live in? You know, what do you do about maintaining them? Well, first and foremost, we have a replacement reserve plan. It's a long range plan and we plan for the replacement of major components in those homes such as roofs for example over a 30-year period monies are collected from members annually and those monies are saved up to replace those major components when their replacement times are due so that's a very very important important program so for example we are planning a homes improvement program which is expected to begin in 2016 and a major portion of that program is going to be funded from the replacement reserve program hence items such as windows and doors are going to be replaced lots of the items which are replaced on an annual basis or which are repaired such as underground utility systems parking lots which are renovated the funds for doing those repairs or replacements come from the replacement reserve program. Then we've got an in-house staff with a maintenance department that has approximately 24 persons and it is their job to undertake preventive maintenance programs geared towards the upkeep of the homes and they also undertake repairs, corrective maintenance, repairs on the basis of work orders that are called in by members. Whenever a member notices that something is broken and needs to be fixed, they can pick up the phone, they can call the maintenance department, and somebody is going to be there, you know, not immediately after, but within, within a few days to take care of the problem. So it's a, very, it's a very comprehensive and well-managed maintenance program that GHI keeps in place for maintaining these, these homes. Well-organized, well-planned, well and it's, as I stated before, it's got a good long-range perspective. The, I, I would like to add that the, the fact of our mission being to maintain the homes into perpetuity changes the game from what a normal homeowner or a rental community yes. has to deal with. And a, a normal homeowner looks at repairs that are needed for 15, 20, maybe 25 years yes. maximum. Mm -hmm. But here in, in GHI, we're looking at repairs to 75-year-old pipes, for example. Yes that are going to need yeah, to be replaced with important. pipes that will last another 75 years. Yes. And that it really ups the, mm -hmm. ups the ante, if you will, <laughs> on, on the, the types of, um, of considerations that, uh, that we have to, have to make. And that's why that replacement reserves is so important. Uh, yes. I would yeah. think that 
sometimes, and I think I've heard this, that some some uh, rentals mm -hmm. and some co-ops and some homeowners get into problems when they are not planning yes. for that. And yes. all of a sudden you have to replace the roof and you have no funds for it. Right, right, exactly right. So then all of a sudden there's a special assessment in your condo fee and, <laughs> and everybody's yes. in an uproar. Yeah, we, sure. don't, we don't have that. Yeah. So you have, you have that replacement reserve that, that then um, is, is sort of helping you manage what's going on. And I think you have some long-range plans currently. I think you just mentioned some yes. long-range plans for improvements. What are those? Well, the, the original homes were rehabilitated in between 1979 and 1982 mm -hmm. because they were, at that time, they were 30, 40, 50 years old. And um, the, the original oil-fired central heating system was scrapped at that time. And, um, it, and a major, major rehabilitation was undertaking new electrical systems, new heating systems, new windows at that time as well, insulation, siding, lots and lots was done. But that rehab is now 32, 33 years old and in need of upgrading. Plus, energy costs have skyrocketed and members are complaining about, we have electric heat in our homes and many of the homes are under insulated and that gives high heating bills and mm -hmm. low comfort. Yeah. So we're trying to um, uh, ameliorate that problem and we've been working on a pilot program to test different uh, methods of improving comfort and energy efficiency in the homes, um, make them more environmentally responsible. That's been going on for the last five years. We're in the last year of it now and uh, we're hoping to have a community-wide homes improvement program that's going to follow on from that starting possibly next year, probably 2016. We'll, we'll really see that get underway. Big, big project. I mean, just replacing windows in 1,600 homes mm -hmm. is that's a, lot, a of, lot of windows. And yeah. I'm sure that the members will have a lot of input into this. Well, yeah, a, a <laughs> certain percentage of members are very active. We wish more members were more active, quite frankly. Hmm. So what are the responsibilities of membership in GHI? Most importantly, as, as a member, I am an owner of the cooperative. I am a co-owner, and so I feel it is my responsibility to participate and be involved as a, as a co-owner. Uh, because we are self-directed. This is a representative democracy on the most grassroots level. We self-govern mm -hmm. our homes and determine what our future is mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the most important responsibility. I agree, um, fully. Yeah. Uh, after that, it's about yeah. um, you know, maintaining, you know, uh, I as a member need to maintain my home and my yard space in reasonably good condition. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably have more to say about that because <laughs> some members yes. fall down on that. Sure. Yeah, I completely agree with everything that Steve said because members are co-owners of the entire corporation. So members cannot only be concerned about their own dwelling unit. They've got to be concerned about the well-being of the entire co-op as a whole and the viability of the co-op well into the future, even beyond you know, their stay in GHI. Okay, so that's, that's the, their big responsibility. And I'm yeah. sure they can be involved by serving on committees, uh, yes. speaking up at membership meetings, running for the board of directors. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, yes. all of these. All of yes. those, right. Yes. And how does somebody get to become a co-owner of a home in GHI? Well, we're a market-based cooperative, so you buy a membership on the real estate market, much in the same way that um, you buy a home in the community at, at large. Mm -hmm. The difference being, when you do buy into uh, Greenbelt Homes Incorporated, you don't get a deed of ownership. What you get is a mutual ownership contract, which is an agreement between the cooperative and the buyer that you shall have the um, uh, sole use of your new home, even though it's still owned by the cooperative, and that you've agreed to abide by the bylaws and, and other rules uh, of the co-op. 
Um, so it's a little bit different in that way. Um, there, are, you still have to go and get a mortgage. Well, many people, most people <laughs> have to go and get a mortgage. Yeah. And um, we don't actually call it a mortgage, we call it a share loan because again, you're not buying a property, you're buying the right to occupy and be a member. So it's a, so it's a share loan, but you're still going to the, going to the bank and, and, uh, and, and getting that share loan monthly payments. Um, the interest is deductible as mortgage interest is in the same way uh, that it would be in regular mortgage. Okay, so that's how you that's how you become a member of and a co-owner of Greenville Home. Yes, there are qualifications. Members have to be approved by the board of directors, and so there are some minimum qualifications as to um, uh, uh, financial ability. Um, we do do um, background checks, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. When, when Greenbelt was first formed by the federal government, there was a very strong desire for um, community involvement in the people who were chosen to live here. You had to apply. Uh, there were over 5,000 applicants for the original 880 homes, and they were interviewed. Folks were interviewed and selected um, for, in, uh, in part, their desire to cooperate and, and form a real community. And that... Um, that has really lived down through the years and is still um, a, a basic tenet of cooperative membership here. Yeah, I think people move here uh, mm -hmm. and stay here. Maybe they move here because it's the, the price is right, but then mm -hmm. I think they stay here because of the opportunity, the real, real opportunity to be involved. Mm -hmm. so, yes. mm -hmm. so, so that's that's how you would become a member of, of GHI. Now, you, you mentioned you're a market rate cooperative, mm -hmm. and we know there are other types of housing cooperatives, the limited equity cooperative. Mm -hmm. How are you different from that? I've been talking a lot, why don't you take that? <laughs> <laughs> well, with a market rate co-op, which is what GHI is, a member is allowed to sell his share within the co-op at whatever price that the market allows, which means that if the, it's worth $200,000 in the marketplace, that member is able to get $2,000 with one provision, and that is that if the member sells within two years of purchasing into the co-op, then he or she may only sell the unit at the price, but not, may not sell it at the price, but can only retain you know, the cost that they originally paid. In a limited equity co-op, it's a bit different. And in a limited equity co-op, they have got a rule which says that you can only sell your share for a certain price. In other words, there's a restriction. Right. Yes. But, but and, and still, when you look at the, uh, you look at the ads around uh, and the, the marketplace in this Washington, D.C. metro area, yes. Even though you're not a limited equity cooperative, mm -hmm. as a market rate cooperative, you're still very, very reasonable, yes. uh, I, I would think. Sure. Yes, very and, and that's by design. The, uh, the idea behind the original planned community that the federal government created and the idea that was continued when the co-op was formed in 1952 was to maintain the homes as affordable as possible. And so... There are a number of bylaws, provisions, such as the one Eldon mentioned, that um, before two years have elapsed, a member cannot profit by selling the home, which keeps speculators away. And another provision is that a member is only allowed to own and occupy one home. So a speculator can't come and buy a, a group of them and flip them the way it can, and, and thereby drive the pricing up. So there are a number of... Uh, uh, of aspects of the of the bylaws that uh, tend to keep the prices low. Also, the homes are small. Mm -hmm. The homes are not new. You will not find jacuzzis in the master bath suite in in green build homes. So um, they they are on the more um, how should we say you know moderate end of the housing spectrum. But still, people want yes. to move here. Oh, so. yeah. I think another great benefit, quite aside from the relative low cost of the homes compared to others in the metro area is that when you look at the fees, they're also through prudent management within the co-op, we are able to 
obtain contractors, for example, through a bid process. Right. And they provide services for a whole variety of things. And we gain economies of scale from providing those services. So for example, if we hire a tree contractor, then <laughs> the services that that tree contractor provides to me as a member for removing a tree in my yard, which will cost $4,000, you know, it's shared by everyone in the co-op, but there are also economies of scale that are gained because that contractor is serving a community of 250 acres, not just an individual homeowner where he would have to go from Silver Spring to Tacoma Park, you know, to some other place. That contractor can send workers here for a number of days in order to deal with the maintenance, tree maintenance issues so with NGH. Lots of good, good yes. reasons and benefits for people to move to, uh, to Greenbelt, to GHI particularly. Yes. So yes. just tell our audience, in case mm -hmm. they're not from GHI, uh, what's the, your website address if they want to find out about moving here? Oh, so uh, that's easy. The, we the website is ghi.coop. So it's ghi.coop. Very good. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for talking with us today about housing co-ops. Thank you thank for having you. us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you.